I want you to take a second and listen to this resume. Serial entrepreneur by 18, had climbed from busboard to operational manager for two hospital properties, grossing over $20 million. Co-founder of Neon Roots at 22, and he has since partnered with Fortune 100 companies like Epson Media and media mongols like Snoop Dogg and Tony Robbins. He's been featured in Forbes 30 under 30 list as most brilliant tech entrepreneur. And today we're going to talk to this guy. From busboy to Forbes 30 under 30, how does this happen? Today we're going to find out. What's going on? My name is Matthew Osborne, and what I'm about to share with you is from an interview that took place in a podcast I started back in 2016 called The Young and Elite, where I interviewed successful entrepreneurs under the age of 30 to figure out the things they were doing that really set them apart and gave them success so early on in life. Then we kind of take a step back and figure out how we can apply those same principles to our lives to be more successful in business and just life in general. If this sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe below to be notified when future videos go live. I've already given you his resume, and now it's time to hear how he did it. Uh, ben was kind enough to come on this interview, uh, not once, but twice. You heard that right, twice, because the first interview had an error with the audio. Some of the audio wasn't usable, and as a podcast host's worst nightmare, I had to go back to him and say, hey, would you be able to come back on the podcast and do it one more time for me? Uh, long story short, once I let him know the issue, he was willing to come re-record the interview all over again. And this interview you're listening to today is the result of that. So without further ado, here is the interview with Ben Lee. Young and Elite, episode 11. Welcome to the Young and Elite Podcast, where your host, Matt Osborne, interviews the world's most elite entrepreneurs under the age of 30. Learn how to become self-employed, gain financial freedom, and live a life on your terms while you're still young. If you want to join the ranks of the Young and Elite, keep listening, because it all starts now. You are listening to the Young and Elite Podcast. I am Matthew Osborne, and I'm excited to bring you another inspiring story of an entrepreneur under the age of 30. If you have a desire to start a business and become self-employed, this is the show for you. Pull up a seat, grab a piece of paper, because you'll want to take some notes. Today, we have Ben Lee, founder of Neon Roots, joining us. Ben, are you excited and ready to go? Matthew, thank you for having me. Um, super pumped, um, ready to get things going, and uh, really happy to be here today. Ben Lee has been making waves as a growth hacker and DIY marketer since college, when he scaled his product attack sheet to become the number one bar exam outline tool on the internet. Since then, Ben co-founded Neon Roots, a digital development agency that has worked with companies like Epson and Spotify. But Neon Roots' success doesn't end with big name clients. Rootstrap, the product development workshop by Neon Roots, is a unique program that helps clients reach millions of users, boosting its alumni's chances of funding by a whopping 2,600%. Ben helped scale Rootstrap to over $1 million standalone business, helping clients like Snoop Dogg and even Tony Robbins. Ben, tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Absolutely. So, um, Ben Lee co-founded Neon Roots in 2011 uh, with my co-founder, Drew Harding. I would say coming from the service industry, uh, you know, really living through a recession. So, I'm kind of this like millennial, but, you know, not, uh, I think they call them like the NG zeros or whatever the cool kids call them these days. I've seen it happen. I do remember the dot-com era. Um, I personally have worked in tech, you know, since I was, you know, like 13, 14, um, and, and really just saw a flaw in the traditional agency model um, when I entered adulthood and started uh, working with, you know, the client service business. Um, we recognized that incentives were not aligned. You know, when Matthew, as the product owner, wanted to, you know, hire agency X, um, there's a natural incentive for agencies to feature creep um, or kind of empower the feature creep behavior to build a much more bloated app than you really need for this so-called MVP. Um, and it, it felt wrong. It just felt kind of unethical. And it, it, as a result, people were shipping um, crappier products. So hopefully I can say that. Uh, <laughs> so I, I that, that was a real like motivating, driving thing force to do it differently. Um, we like to think of ourselves as having rebuilt the agency model. 
Um, you know, and, 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 and by and large, that's because of Rootstrap, where we host these private incubator workshop sessions. Um, incentives are aligned to create the MVP. Um, in some cases, the final determination is go build a Snapchat channel. Don't build a product. Um, or, you know, maybe the margins are too thin and you shouldn't, you know, further develop this idea or pivot. Um, and in those cases, product owners still say, amazing. Thank you so much for saving six, six months of my life and like a half a million dollars in development fees. Um, we attribute the success to obviously our amazing product owners and startups and brands that we've worked with. Um, you know, the whopping 2,600%, you know, that's a real social proof. It sounds kind of crazy. Um, but having had over 150 workshops hosted, um, 10% of alums raising a quarter million in seed capital, half of them raising 1.5 million. Um, it's, it's amazing that we've seen Rootstrap evolve to this platform where entrepreneurs um, can really de-risk their investment when entering the app space. Yeah. So that sounds like a great business model, a great business idea. How did you get that business idea off the ground initially? How did you go from being a normal 20-something-year-old to owning the business you have today? Was it your first business venture? Or what was your first business venture? And kind of walk us through that journey to actually starting uh, Rootstrap and what that looked like for you. Sure. Um, no, definitely not my first business venture. I've done everything from throwing parties to trading Bitcoin to selling batteries uh, and creating e-commerce sites to sell batteries. Um, I, I've done a lot. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, where you know there's a kind of a hustle in the air, where you really have to kind of just start hustling young. Um, so I got the entrepreneurial bug pretty young uh, in that respect. L series of interesting events led me to get into, you know, digital products. Um, met an interesting entrepreneur on an airplane where I discovered uh, these bar outlines on DocStock and Scribed um, that were getting like 50,000 downloads and licensed the product from him uh, and turned it into the number one, you know, downloaded product you know, beating Barbary for uh, attack sheets for people needing to basically cram or study for the bar exam. Um, in Neon Roots, when we started, we made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. So it wasn't just, you know, uh, clear skies and unicorns. It was, um, it was a lot of work and in, in iterating our agency business to figure out, you know, where can we provide the most value um, and make money. We made a lot of this, you know, the rookie mistakes of over committing ourselves, not managing expectations, doing fixed scope, fixed bid work, um, not really following an agile framework um, and, and really almost had to walk away at a certain point. Um, you know, the, really the point at which a lot of things changed was when we met this client who was going to spend a lot of money with us and the idea was completely crap. Um, but you know, when you're at a point when you have a huge overhead and you have a lot of, you know, food and families to, to, you know, to account for, um, sometimes you have to take on shady projects and that's kind of what happened in around 2012, 2013, um, where we met this client and my business partner, Drew, who's always been the more sort of relaxed, pragmatic one said, you know, Ben, don't take on this project. It's we're gonna regret it. Like this is a bad one. Like don't do it. And I said, let me, you know, let me let me try something. Let me let me spin this in an interesting way where you know maybe we can do a try before you buy it, and we can really help this guy and help him kind of through the inception process figure out something that makes sense and that's buildable and not his kooky vision. Um, and that's exactly what happened. So at the time we didn't call it Rootstrap. We called it Story Carding packaged it as this really well documented planned uh you know three-part discovery series um it was a huge hit it resulted in a better product that he developed with us leaving both parties happy um so it was really at that point where when i identified we need to make this a requirement and a prerequisite to work with us on anything and we have um whether you're 
you know, a billion dollar company uh, like Salesforce or your Tony Robbins, um, we make all of our clients go through, you know, an inception process, which is Rootstrap. And all of them are extremely grateful for the opportunity and the experience and, and understand that it results in a better product. It results in the output of a product that allows them to stay in their original budget. Uh, and it, it makes the teams mutually excited about working on something and, and really understanding what it is we're building, you know, validating a lot of these things before we write a single line of code. Yeah, I love I love how you pointed out that it was kind of a rough time in the business. The business wasn't business wasn't doing extremely well. You needed to figure out something else. And what kind of eventually sounds like turned that around is that you sat back and said, "Hey, let's focus on the customer. Let's figure out their needs and actually help them achieve success. Not just do exactly what they're telling us, but help them achieve success. And in turn, our business will achieve success as well. And I think that's vital for new businesses is actually deeply caring about the customer's uh, customers that you have, not just thinking of them as another revenue source, but deeply caring about them and wanting their success because that's what in turn brings success uh, on your end. Totally, totally. And, you know, Matt, you got to keep in mind that we work with so many startups. And, you know, as a result, entrepreneurs are likely coming to us from, you know, a bad experience with a previous vendor who mm-hmm. ran their shop like a churn and burn or didn't know how to manage expectations. Um, so when you're starting an engagement and there's already some, you know, shell shock or, you know, a little bit of damage from a previous relationship or previous vendor, you really, really need to establish and figure out how to develop that trust early on in order for it to be successful. Um, that's one of the key things about what we do is that we're only focused on MVP. You know, when, when we build a product and when we're rootstrapping it, our rootstrap team is not thinking about, you know, how to keep this project in a six month development cycle. Um, we're not trying to milk them for their budget. We're focused on what we're doing for three and a half weeks. Um, how can we get a product to market as quickly as possible and then iterate? Um, you know, and that's, that's been the secret to our success. You know, it's, it's real. Um, it's real in that we have figured out a way to align incentives, um, deliver value to, you know, the end user. In our case, it's the client or the product owner. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah. So talk us through a little bit more about how you got your first customers in the business. It's great to have the idea and to be where you are now, but it's normally where people struggle the most is how to get that first customer, how to get the first few customers and build up that trust initially. Where did you guys get your first customers from? What did that look like for you? Yeah, so I, we got our first customer from you know, a previous relationship. Uh, my business partner you know, asked me if you know, we could spin up a dev team. We both had left uh, the previous job we were at. Started with three developers, one client, so you know, entirely bootstrapped. Maybe five hundred, a thousand bucks. I, I don't really remember the exact dollar amount, um, but yeah, it, it, it was completely bootstrapped with one relationship. Um, and everything in this business is about relationships. Uh, you know, even if you are you know the most introverted engineer on this planet. If you're not building relationships, no one's going to really know you exist. You're not going to be able to sell. Um, and a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm not a sales guy. I need to hire one. Well, everybody's selling. You know, nobody really, uh, you know, we, we, in the day in the days of the social media influencers, I think it's now more apparent more than ever that we're, everyone's always trying to influence or sell something. Um, and whether it's you as a brand, whether it's you as a dev shop, you know, whatever you, you do, you um, you need to start understanding that, you know, it is an art form to sell. Some people have it, some people don't. But if you don't, then focus on what you're good at. And a lot of the times, it, people need to start communicating, learning that relationships are key. Um, and then the business, I mean, it, it really does start pouring in after that. So I think the key is to not be dependent on any one uh, referral source. Um, we 
run a variety of different inbound campaigns, uh, outbound. Um, but the key is developing those relationships. People remember you, you know, one year, two years, three years later. Um, it is not uncommon for me to get hit up from a relationship from two years ago. And they're like, I've been, you, you, I just thought, I thought about you. I want to build an app. I'm ready. Um, so building real relationships, it pays massive dividends. Definitely. For the young and elite listeners out there, if you followed my advice and you grabbed a piece of paper, write that one point down if you take something away from this interview is that build relationships. Relationships are so key when starting a business and you can't just do it by yourself, only by yourself and never network out there because like you said, those relationships even if it's two years down the road or what's really going to pay off in the end. And it's so vital for new startups, especially when you're young and you haven't built that network over your entire life. So what would your best piece of advice be then, Ben, for someone that wants to do what you do? Best piece of Matthew, best piece of advice uh, that I can give the listeners out there um, is start hustling, start creating a brand. Uh, some people create a brand around them, their identity. That, I personally don't do that because I like to be a little bit low key. I'm just I'm not on Instagram, Snapchat. You know, I have my I have someone who runs my Twitter account, so I'm, I'm you know I, I I'm not really into that stuff. Um, some people are, in, in which case it's totally cool. Um, you know, invest in yourself if you want to create a brand around that. Um, if not, you know, invest it in a brand of a company that you want to build. Um, go out there, you know, do the whole network thing. Um, sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't, but you have to do it and you have to try. Uh, and start figuring out ways that you can, you know, start selling services if you do want to be a service provider. Um, we're at this really kind of unique point where, you know, with technology, um, you know, advertising, there's so much disruption going on on a like daily basis that you can seriously sell services as an expert for anything, assuming you, you are really good at it. Um, one thing would be, you know, helping kind of curate your Instagram. Um, people have lots of opportunities to maximize capital profits off social media these days. So, you know, helping and being an advisor or consultant and, and, you know, building clients that way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Another big thing is don't drink the Kool-Aid and think you need to go raise money. You know, that is a common trend that you see with young entrepreneurs. They think, um, you know, getting into some big fancy accelerator or getting a ton of cash is like this mecca. Um, it's not. You know, you need to go out, hustle and make real profits, like actually be in the black. Um, that's what running a successful business is. You know, don't get all you know caught up in the hype or drink the Kool-Aid that all these big series A and investors blah 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 is super important because it's not um, you know focus on your business focus on growth uh, and that's really should be your strategy so you've started a lot of businesses over the time a lot of different experiences especially just with uh, Rootstrap uh, and Neon Roots alone so I'm sure you figured out a little bit over time what, what kind of works and what doesn't. So what, what are the main habits that the Young and Elite listeners should implement into their lives? Which ones have helped you out the most? Yeah, I mean, I have currently like five or six different companies I run. Um, I have Neon Roots, which is you know a dev consulting business that services um, clients like Tony Robbins. You know, I have Rootstrap, which is development, pre-development pre workshop. Um, I have Neon Waves, which is my gaming company. I also have a production company, a studio, where we do content creation, influencer marketing. The key to how I got that level of success um, and how I sort of maintain my sanity running all these companies without ever getting an outside dollar or investment um, is understanding that fail fast, adapt is real. Um, it's not just some buzz term that is in a bunch of lean startup books or whatever, you know, cool books are out there on, you know, building a business. It is real. Um, recognize when something doesn't work and don't be afraid to fail. Failure is so necessary uh, in business and in life. Um, and if you're too afraid or if you hold on too long and you really just let the emotions get the best of you, you shouldn't be in business. Um, so that is the one thing that uh, has helped me 
through this journey because I have failed a lot. Um, but the experience from it is, is better and worth more than any MBA or you know degree I could ever possibly have gotten. That's such an important lesson. Failure is a huge part. Oh, failure and entrepreneurship go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. They're going to happen. It's just like you said, how you handle that failure when it does happen that makes the success that you have today. I, I love it. It's awesome. All right, so it is time for the rapid fire round. I will ask you six questions in rapid succession, and you tell us the first thing that comes to your mind. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, what is one goal you are trying to reach right now? One goal I'm trying to reach right now is to publish a game within my new gaming studio to do a million dollars in in in-app purchase revenue uh, by year one. Awesome. What is your favorite app or software that you'd recommend? Uh, For productivity, I mean, the obvious ones are Slack, uh, Wonderlist. Um, Also, if you're an entrepreneur, um, meditating, you know, figuring out kind of how you can get in touch with your spiritual side is really, really important. Um, so you've got the mindfulness or headspace. Um, I would really recommend those. Uh, it's done wonders. I've recently started using headspace. I love that app. It's awesome. Totally. Especially Amazing, the first right? 10 series. Yeah. It's, it's the best free meditation app in my opinion. I'll definitely put that on the show notes page. Totally. What is your morning routine? Uh, morning routine varies what time zone I'm in <laughs> right now. I'm with the team, team in Uruguay. So I get a little bit of a late start because I'm four hours ahead. Um, When I'm home in my LA office, uh, I really like to get some exercise in the morning. So even if it's a quick jog uh, or, you know, do some sauna action. I'm fortunate enough to have a sauna in my office so I can use that for 20, 30 minutes um, and get really charged up for uh, my day. Sounds like a pretty awesome office. It is. Yeah, we're we're really blessed. (laughs) What is one book you would recommend to the Young and Elite listeners? Okay, so if I could recommend only one book, um, it would be The Personal MBA, uh, which is, I believe, Josh Kaufman. Um, The reason why I like this one is because it it really does an amazing job at giving you digestible topics and concepts on selling, um, economics, real estate, commoditized industries, markets. It's just a really kind of well-rounded book. So if you're doing marketing, if you're trying to be more into tech, if you're trying to do social media, if you want to be a real estate agent, if you want to be a finance guy, you will be able to get a tremendous amount of knowledge transfer from this book. Great. All right. You are given $100,000. You can't spend it on your current business and you can't start a new business. What would you do with it? What would you buy? I would give it, I would figure out a way uh, to give it to a charity that I believe in. So no middlemen, um, probably something uh, in Uruguay, which is where I have a lot of my development teams here, uh, spin up a program where uh, it would probably be focused around technology or an existing charity that I can give the money to directly. I love it. All right. And for the last question of the rapid fire round, is there any plug for your business that you would like to share with the young and elite listeners? Absolutely. Young and elite, um, if you are looking to build a business, um, start with a pre-development workshop like Rootstrap. If you can't afford it, that's okay. Um, Check out Lifehack, check out uh, HuffPo, check out Forbes on Rootstrap. I do a lot of contributing authorship stuff. I publish content and there's a lot of stuff out there already that helps you understand the value in road mapping and why you should do it. Um, and even some free tips and tools. Um, If you want to check out a little bit more about our company, culture, uh, job inquiry, whatever, um, check out Neon Roots, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, you name it, Neon Roots, neonroots.com. All right, Ben, I'm glad you came on the show today because I'm confident that your story will inspire and motivate others to take action on their business idea and uh, reject the status quo and strive for more. 
And for the Young and Elite listeners out there, check out the show notes page at youngandelite.com for a breakdown of what Ben shared with us today. And also, if you want to find a way to listen to the Young and Elite podcast on the go, you can find it on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, or listen directly from the website. To close out this awesome interview, I have two last questions for you, Ben. Who are you and how are you feeling? I am Ben Lee, and I'm young and elite. And that is the interview with Ben Lee. What was your biggest takeaway from Ben? Be sure to leave that in the comments below. More episodes just like this will be dropping every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. EST. Subscribe below to be notified when those are released, and I really hope to see you there.